400 years old and this guy's looking pretty good. Just as well because those bones are needed to provide the DNA that will hopefully confirm what everybody here thinks that this is Sir George Yardley. What I'm interested in doing is getting a bone or a tooth sample that I can take away to do DNA analysis. What I want to do is analyze the DNA from the skeleton and see if it matches that as a, of a known relative. To check him out myself, I have to provide my DNA as a control. Um, all you need to do is breathe on these remains or touch them and you're putting your DNA all over it. So one of the things I'm really worried about is contamination. So I need you to spit into that up to that line, it's actually going to take you longer. That's a lot of spit. It is. It'll take you quite a long time to actually do. And then we're going to close the lid. That's got a buffer in it that will keep the DNA nice and happy. And then I'm going to take it back to the UK to do analysis. I'm going to do this. Yeah, else. I'd go up. <laughs> take your time. <laughs> Once we're tested and suited up, we enter the grave site to look for teeth. Uh, well, this is amazing. So look over here, we've got, looks like a tooth here another one underneath there so it's looking good it's looking like we've got some teeth here that we'll be able to do dna analysis with it's, it's amazing to make sure they were digging in the right place scientists used ground penetrating radar this is the first time that we have imaged a human skeleton with ground penetrating radar it's a really big deal because it's not supposed to be possible but I think this is going to open a lot of doors for new research, uh, for non-invasively looking at archaeological remains um, and potentially not even having to disturb them at all. But why does anybody care about Sir George Yardley? This is where Sir George Yardley presided over the first General Assembly that established the rule of law in America and the principle of representative government. But there is a dark side to this story because Sir George was also one of the first English slaveholders in the colonies. When George Yardley first set foot in Jamestown in the summer of 1610, the colony was on the brink of collapse. Barely 60 settlers had survived the winter and some had resorted to cannibalism. A decade later, Sir George was in charge of a settlement that offered rich rewards. In 1619, they also um, managed to get hold of the first enslaved Africans who arrived in this colony. Um, which was about the same time as the General Assembly, and Sir George became one of the largest of those slave owners. There are a thousand other graves at Jamestown, each with a story to tell, and with every discovery emerges a more complete history of the origins of modern America. Jane O'Brien, BBC News, Jamestown.